The biggest problem of Adi Purush is not its VFX, at least according to me. Yes, it looks as realistic as Cricket 2007. The lighting is all over the place. The characters, creatures and their features are pretty much a mess. And let's just leave this bat or dragon or pagan alone. A lot of people have already spoken about the confusing quality of the VFX. And hopefully when we see it on the big screen, when we see the entire film, maybe it'll feel different. At least that's what director Om Rao is saying. And before we get to watch it on the big screen, I recommend another movie called Everything everywhere all at once. It's made on a budget of less than half of Adi Purush. 80% of his VFX was made by just five people. Go and check it out. Anyways, like I said, my problem or my fear about Adi Purush is not its VFX, but a very specific part of its storytelling. Actually, a very specific character. Now, I'm going to give you some blockbuster movie titles and I'm going to ask you an important question at the end of it. The Harry Potter series, Lord of the Rings, The Dark Knight, Inglorious Bastards, Vikram Veda, Jurassic Park, and Jaws. Now, what is the one thing that's in common with all these movies? Pause the video if you want, think for a few seconds and then come back. So, the answer to this question is in one of my favorite quotes by director Alfred Hitchcock. The more successful the villain, the more successful the picture. So, the one thing that's in common with all these films is a villain, a very, very strong antagonist. Harry Potter had Lord Voldemort and just the mention of his name sends shivers down the spines of the wizarding world and that's why he's called He Who Must Not Be Named. The Lord of the Rings had Gollum, this tiny creature fully possessed by greed, created using performance capture technology and while the character itself is so iconic, when you get to know how Andy Serkis' performance gave life to this character, you'll be mind blown. The Dark Knight, of course, had Joker, possibly the most impactful villain in film history thanks to Heath Ledger's insane performance and how the character was designed and how it captured the spirit of true madness. In Inglorious Bastards and Vikram Veda, we had two villains who are mostly calm and composed. They have a hundred different calculations going on in their head and you have no idea what they're thinking about, which makes them that much more dangerous. And in Jurassic Park and Jaws, you don't even have a human villain. We have these creatures as antagonists. The way Steven Spielberg builds up tension and anticipation by not showing the creatures that much. Just a few ripples in a glass of water or a barrel being pulled away is enough. With all of these characters, whether it's the look or the performance or the body language, or most importantly, the design and the writing of the characters is so strong. Whether they're on screen or not, you feel this fear, you feel this tension watching them as an audience. You constantly worry about what they're going to do next and how the hero is going to defeat this villain. And because of all this, the fight between good versus evil becomes so much more exciting, so much more three-dimensional. And when the hero finally defeats the villain, you feel genuine joy and you celebrate those heroes. But but in Adi Purush, we have this. A villain who's supposed to be Ravan, but looks like a new age model with a Gen Z haircut, while Ram is in traditional clothing. And a villain who's constantly going like, ah, ah, ah. Sorry I had to see that, but seriously, when you take an epic like Ramayana, which every Indian has grown up on and seen so many different versions of it, whether it's the Japanese anime version, which is still so spectacular till date, or the series which used to come on Doordarshan, or the contemporary version by Mani Ratnam, which is not a perfect film by any measure, but still, it gave us something completely new and we got to see a whole different kind of Ravan altogether. And when you're doing a 500 crore film, which so many people are looking forward to, don't you think a character like Ravan, the peak of evil, a villain so powerful that every single year we celebrate a festival over his killing? Don't you think such a character deserves a better version than this? And if you think I'm just talking about Saif Ali Khan, no, absolutely not. I'm not talking about his performance because Saif has played some amazing great characters in the past and he killed it as one of my favorite villains in Hindi film history, Langra Tyagi in Omkara. So we know that we can perform, but what I'm really talking about is the way the characters potentially designed and potentially written, which actually stems from the vision of the filmmaker here. Ravan is supposed to be super powerful, larger than life, extremely grey, has to incite fear and has to become this almost impossible to defeat villain. And though you can't do much with Ram's character because he's the peak of goodness and virtue, you can just show him as it is, but there is so much that can be experimented with Ravan's character. And you can go wild, you can go all out in creating this legendary 
legendary villain that we're all familiar with, but redefine him in a way that we all lose our shit when we look at him. But just based on the teaser that we got to see right now, I don't think that feeling is coming through. Right now, the character just looks like a textbook definition of what evil looks like. And this can work if it's a kid's film where you have to dumb it down. You have to define these clear boundaries of what good and evil looks like. I think this was such a great opportunity to create a legendary film, which can only happen if you have this legendary villain that the hero can defeat and celebrate the triumph of good over evil. And I know this is just the teaser. I really hope that the film has much more and I really, really hope that my fear and my prediction is wrong. But for now, let me know your thoughts on what you think of Ravan's character. Do you think they'll pull it off or not? And let's wait for a few more months to see what happens on the big screen. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.